It's great. How are you? Okay. I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Okay, we're live right now with um, guys. Today, what we're going to be talking about is um, what is the biggest lie about autoimmune disease that your doctors, your doctor believes that's killing you. And I'm Dr. Maggie Yu, an integrative uh, MD who has actually focused on um, the past, um, I've been in practice for 22 years, and the last 10 years of my career has been focused on transforming and turning around autoimmune disease naturally. I did that for myself, and now I work with tons of clients with that um, in our online educational program. Right here today, we are going to bust this lie. What is that lie? And why is this, why is this important? Why is it important for you to know uh, what the biggest lie that your doctors believe? Well, Kim here is a classic example. Kim is a graduate of our um, launch pad program, and she graduated about a month or two ago. And today, we're really using her case and her experience as an example of why when your doctors believe in a lie, then you're going to be a you're going to be seeing the downstream effect of that, which is that you're going to be living the result of them believing in this lie that it exists. And in her case, is a perfect example of how it's really affecting her health detrimentally. Okay, so um, that's why we're doing this today. And right now, if you're wherever you're watching from, if you can go ahead and share this, that would be awesome. Go ahead and just share it um, to your personal page or tag someone that you know can benefit from learning about this information that may have autoimmune disease. We're going to go dive right in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Kim do a quick introduction of herself right now uh, on um, who she is and what were some of the diagnoses she was dealing with before she joined our program a couple months ago. Well, I'm um, a 52-year-old single woman who has to provide for herself and work full-time and in the classroom as a classroom teacher, you know, it's on the go all the time. And so um, I was diagnosed about eight years ago with lupus, and then soon after that, fibromyalgia followed, and soon after that, Children's syndrome, and then um, I lost part of my thyroid to a, a cyst that was possibly cancerous, and just with all the fatigue and the brain fog and the pain, um, living life was really difficult, and I felt like that was what my life was going to be from here on out. Okay, so a lot of diagnosis, this is really typical, and you were treated by quite a few doctors at that time, correct? I have so many ists, you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Gynecologist, gastroenterologist, neurologist, uh, cardiologist, right? Just to name a couple of the gists, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you didn't even hit <laughs> Half of them? Maybe. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's go out. right in. Yeah. So, so let's go right into, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to share a whiteboard. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of draw out what your experience has been. Okay. So let's talk about this, Kim. Based on um, your experience, that we, what is the biggest lie actually that we're talking about that your doctors believe is that there is no cause to effect. Okay. And let's demonstrate this. Cause is down here effect or symptoms are up here, okay? So what the, the biggest lie that doctors believe is that there is nothing that's, that's, there's no known cause. So what we're really dealing with in the conventional medical model is just symptoms, okay? So let's go over, Kim, what were your top three symptoms uh, when, before you joined the program that you've been dealing with for over a decade? Let's go with some of these effects, one, two, three. Uh, pain. Um, all, all over body pain, joint pain, muscle pain, weakness, um, fatigue, just incredible um, fatigue that you just can't really even describe. Right. And um, brain fog. I would, I couldn't form sentences. I couldn't um, find words. I couldn't look at my students and pull their names out of my head. Um, right. My memory sucked. And what was the impact of this on your life the last decade? Well, it, it sort of stopped my life in its tracks. I, uh, just about the time I was diagnosed, I got a promotion. And um, uh, two years in, I finally had to just say, I, I can't do this. Um, I wasn't being effective. And I went back to the classroom, which was still very difficult. Uh, but that was... 
um, many thousands of dollars lost. Um, also, I became sort of isolated. I, systemic lupus, you can't go into this, you can't be out in the sun. And when I did have energy, I still couldn't be out in the sun. So, you know, I'm a homebody, especially in the desert climate where I live in the summertime, when I was off work, I was in the house the whole time. And then you just don't have the mojo, as Dr. Maggie likes to call it. You don't have the, <laughs> um, you don't have the oomph to get up and do anything. Okay, so you mentioned that I'm just um, putting this in a form on the right outline form. You lost. Um, you basically you self chose to demote um, a promotion. You experienced social isolation. You basically surrounded your life obsessively around trigger avoidance, what you thought were the triggers. And then you lost your mojo, zest for life, mood, like your happiness, your joy, right? Mm -hmm. And then you had mentioned also the financial impact, okay? So let's say, like, just, I'm just curious, like, in a year, how much was that demotion costing you? $1,000. How many? $7,000. 7 k a year. Okay? All right. Um, and this is also when you say you were avoiding uh, avoidance, I mean, you were also, I bet you were avoiding travel vacations, visits to family? Um, I did those things, but um, I always had a sense of guilt when I would go visit family because I couldn't help. It was all, it was for me conserving my energy for the things that had to be done. Right. Okay. Got it. So it was like you were, you had to conserve what energy you had and you, you would pay later if you did things a lot of times. Exactly. Okay, so there was payment later, and whether that's three days in bed after the event, right, or lost days from work because you were suffering. Yes. Okay, so there's payment for that. Now, let's talk about this because doctors, I'm going to look at this because there is no cause and effect connection right here, and we're treating these as symptoms, okay, so the, the pain, the fatigue, and brain fog symptoms. You did this for a decade. Can we go through the list of treatment? or band-aids that you did to actually, because there is no causes, you can't treat the cause, you can only treat those effects. What were the quote unquote treatment or band-aids that you used over the last decade to deal with these three symptoms? Well, I have my own pharmacy. Um, um, immunosuppressive drugs, the same kind that transplant patients take. Um, Immunosuppressants? That, yeah, that make you susceptible to cancer. Um, chemotherapy drugs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, anti-malarial drugs, antidepressants, um, eye drops, you know, every, I was taking pills, rubbing creams, dropping drops. And how many and, doctors were you actively seeing at any given time? What's your average number of specialists or gynecologists, psychiatrists, cardiologists? How many just at a time were you employing? Uh, cardiologist, endocrinologist, pulmonologist, my GP, my rheumatologist. I saw an immunologist. So six or seven. So seven specialists at any given time. Right? And that basically as a result caused you to have tons of drugs, visits, procedures. And I went to a dermatologist once and they gave me a drug that caused such a bad reaction that I ended up on prednisone, uh, a high dose of prednisone for another year and a half. Side effect so management of all the drugs you got on became another <laughs> list of band-aids to, to treat the band-aids. So the band-aids themselves caused problems, so you added a bunch of band-aids to deal with those on top of it. Yes. And what happened as a result being on prednisone for that year or two? I gained, I was on it for three and a half years. Um, I gained like 70 pounds um, that I still, most of it I still have not been able to get rid of. My skin is very thin. I bruise very easily. Um, yeah. And, right. and my mood is difficult on the prednisone. The mood. So joy, right? Mood. Okay. So as, and if you look at this in terms of, I mean, this is a lot of treatments when you don't think that you can treat a cause of something, you're treating symptoms. This is a long list of treatment and band-aids that in themselves cause further more band-aids. 
And dollar amount, we had just talked about that. You were um, you didn't um, continue on the promotion work. You did, got demoted. You demoted yourself. There were also lost days from work, right? Um, from work, and then there's also the cost. What is the cost every year of actually having your own pharmacy, seeing all these specialists, and dealing with all the side effects of this? How many ER visits was there? Urgent care visits was there? How many procedures and surgeries did you actually go through in those in that decade? Well. I was very fortunate that I have not had to make a lot of visits to the ER. Right. Um, but I know that's not the case for most, uh, most women with systemic lupus. However, um, I did have to deal with, um, I blew out a disc in my neck, I had an appendicitis, I had to have half my thyroid removed. These are all I've had, procedures, right? Yes, I've had to I biopsied. This is um, what happens as a result of treating effects only. So if you think about the last decade with all those procedures and stuff, how much do you think that costs as far as medical procedures, uh, surgeries, hospitalization for you? Oh, and all the tests that I've had, with all and the nothing. CTs and all, and all the echocardiograms, I, I, I'm sure it's upwards of $100,000. So, okay, you spent $100,000. This is a $100,000 approach over a 10 year, um, this is the, I'm gonna call it the $100,000 approach. And this is the $100,000 approach when you don't know that there's a cause to it, you keep treating effects. This as a result in the last decade alone has costed you $100,000. Thankfully I have amazing insurance, but if I didn't, uh, there'd be no way. I would have gone without medical care. Well, Kim, and think about this. This is just, you know, most people have, like with insurance these days, a 20% copay for most of these things. So if you just think about 20% copay, $20,000, and then like $7,000 a year in, a, in lost prom, um, promotion wages, 10 years of $70,000 in lost wages and $20,000 just in copay alone. So this right. is still $100,000 out of pocket for you right now. Yeah, it's it's... It's crippling. You've never seen it like this, have you? No. Most people never see it like that, which is why I love to take people through this. And I mean, all of you that are watching this video, I would love for you guys to actually draw this triangle and make this list yourself. So you can actually calculate out what is the true cost of this lie, that there is no cause to all these symptoms. What is the cause of a Band-Aid only approach to symptoms? And in Kim's case in the last decade, $100,000 out of pocket. Okay. Triangle. Just list yourself so you can actually okay next we're going to talk about i'm going to use what does cause and effect mean okay that's what we do we i mean Kim, you've been through our program and in our launch pad eight weeks we're really teaching you there's a cause to every effect so i want to demonstrate and i'm gonna and i'm gonna go through just let's just pick one of your symptoms let's pick the effect and symptom of pain we're going to talk pain okay i'm going to ask you now that you've been through our launch pad eight weeks what are some causes of the pain that you know for sure, 100%, that's what's causing your pain now? I mean, and prior to this, you had no idea, correct? Right. Okay. Um, so what are some of the causes of your pain right now that you know based on what you learned from the program about yourself? Well, the, the main one for me is blood sugar. If Crazy, I don't see right? my... Blood sugar yes, and pain? Who the heck is, have, how, have you ever heard about blood sugar balance being linked with pain? Ever? No, the, I knew I got grown. I didn't realize my pain was tied to that. So in the last 10 years, no one's ever told you or taught you the connection between blood sugar and pain. You learned how to nope. do that in our program and balance your blood sugar. What are you understanding about blood sugar as a cause for pain? Tell me about what that is for you. How does that work? Well, I know that if I do if I let my blood sugar dip and I don't make sure I'm eating to stay ahead of the hunger and eating the right kinds of things, then my, I go hypoglycemic and I have pain. I can feel it building right. in my body. Right. Huge cause, right? And how, 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 and okay. And that's, and no one in the last 10 years have, and when you, and that's my issue is, is that everybody's dealing with the pain and the symptoms and you have a hundred thousand solution dollars, quote unquote, non-solution on the right. And you're looking at this cause blood sugar, dang it. Yes. Okay. 
This is really important. Those of you that are watching right now, if you're finding this useful, please go ahead and share it right now uh, to your own personal page. Write in the comment section any questions that you have, um, or just put the name of somebody that you know could benefit from this. And wherever you're watching for, from, can you just give me a favor and just comment where you're watching from? It's great to know our demographics. Okay, I'd love to, Kim and I would love to know who we're talking to and where you're from. Thanks. Um, okay, so blood sugar is just one of them. What's another aspect that's a cause that you know now for sure, 100% clarity that's causing you the pain? Uh, gluten. Gluten for you. Okay, how so? Well, um, the first thing that I did was eliminate gluten in your program. And I went about, and I didn't really, because I was working on so many things at once, I didn't realize that how important gluten was. But about six weeks into the program, I went out to sushi. And I thought I was avoiding things. But soy sauce, I didn't realize soy sauce had gluten. And um, I was not even out of the restaurant when I was having muscle pain. And, and, how, come, and how come you never knew this before? <laughs> I have no idea. Because no one would believe and believe. That's the lie. No one would believe that gluten or any food could cause you to have symptoms. So you had no idea because your doctors believe in that lie. And as a result, you believed in that lie. Therefore, you just hurt all the time. Yes. Yes. Because I... Love me some bread. Right? Now do you realize when I love me some bread that has gluten in it, do you love the pain it causes? No. In fact, I was talking with my family because, you know, I brought some gluten-free things for Thanksgiving and, and I was saying um, that there will be a time when it will be worth it for me to have a piece of tiramisu, but I will know ahead of time the cost. Right. Um, um, but I, but I, going to happen, and that will be a choice I will make. But now I choose not to do that. Exactly, you have choices that are educated. You know the exact cause and effect. So yes. again, another reason, another thing that ha a big result of this is is that when your doctors don't believe there's a cause to every effect, you are completely blind to the fact that blood sugar made a huge difference and gluten was making a huge difference, and it was right under your nose every single freaking day. Yes. And now it's like, how incredibly powerful are you? I'm yes. just curious, by the way, what level was the pain before you came into the program? Zero to 10. Um, on an average, probably about a four or five. You five become, out of 10. You're like the frog in the fire, in the, in the frying pan, because you become so used to it that you just function through it and don't think about putting a number on it. And um, how many people out there watching this training right now um, is the frog in the frying pan where you've gotten so used to your level of pain or fatigue or brain fog, it's your new norm. And when you actually think back five years ago, 10 years ago, was that norm at all? Hell no. But you become so accustomed to it that we, we actually, one of the biggest issues with autoimmune disease is the high tolerance of level of people have to severe level of symptoms like pain, fatigue, or brain fog. I mean, you had to demote yourself from one job to another as a result of this. You took a $7,000 a year pay cut as a result of this, and yet it was just still all part of just sitting in a frying pan, not even realizing it for a decade. Yeah. Right? So if you guys can relate to that, go ahead and paste in the com post in the comment section. Me too. Frog in the frying pan, right? And frog in the frying pan, okay? Next thing, okay, besides blood sugar, gluten, I'm curious, were those the only two things that you realize now is related to pain or were there others? No, um, there are some nutrient deficiencies. I've recently begun um, with my new naturopathic doctor. I've been um, now doing magnesium um, and B12 um, infusions. Once a week, I go get an IV. And I used to have such bad restless leg. It was all over my body. It would start about seven o'clock at night in my shoulders and in my arms and go down into my legs. And I would take, you know, um, Mirapex and sometimes even that wouldn't touch it. And I would have to resort to Tramadol every once in a while just to be able to get through the pain to go to sleep. Um, those IVs have completely erased my, my restless leg, completely. So right now, right now, what you're telling me is that um, you have, uh, as far as restless leg is concerned, zero in restless leg syndrome, RLS, okay? 
Yes, when I'm and, when I'm having IVs, yes. And then what about the pain? What level is your pain at right now? Um, I don't have pain. I mean, I have a muscle cramp, but that's just because I've been sitting driving for 12 hours a couple days. So, um, but I have no pain, I'm joint pain. And I am, I am um, in the middle of Idaho where it's freezing. And last year with my family, I had incredible pain from the cold. I have no pain. From so the wait, wait a minute. You've had pain from the fibro, from the Sjogren's, from the lupus for 10 years. And it was at five out of 10 level when we started this three months ago. And right now what you're saying is that your pain is zero out of 10. Yeah. Okay. I mean, sitting now, yeah, I might, I might blip up to a one, you know, every once in a while or a two, but right now, no, I'm good. Yeah. And my other question is for you, Kim, is that, is this, was this only your experience? Is your outcome with zero, with the restless leg and zero out of 10 pain now, is that an unusual outcome from the program from what you've witnessed? Or is this the average? Is this the norm? How are other people's outcomes compared to what you've experienced? Oh, there are, there are amazing outcomes. There are miraculous things I've heard in the mastermind calls and um, in live videos of people I've gone through the program with, people who felt like they were on their deathbed and are up and living vital lives. Yes. So awesome. So, the so that's based on finding out and learning your cause of number one is for you, it's just blood huge thing, blood sugar, aha moment, gluten, number two. Number three was your nutrient deficiency. Anything else? I mean, as if that wasn't enough, I'm just going to, we're going to try to pack as much teaching and bonus for people who are watching this training right now. Um, anything else that you think is a cause that was causing your, your pain that you learned? Well, I don't. I have severe, I don't even know yet because I have such severe hormone deficiencies um, that I'm looking forward to getting on top of those to see what else will be erased that I don't even realize is bothering me. You know, because again, that frog in the firing, in the, in the frying pan. Um, but I have, from being on prednisone for so many years, I have um, adrenal exhaustion. I have no cortisol and no storehouse of of the building blocks for my body to make cortisol. Um, I have no sex hormone. So as we, you know, get those back online, I, I can only imagine what life is going to be like. I have so, hope. Damn girl. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, this is huge. And I'm going to just throw it in here is why the role of hormones and pain people don't even understand. I mean, that's like a mind blow right there. I mean, if just one symptom of hormone imbalance is insomnia, one of the biggest times that your body heals from injury that causes you to be in less pain. So if your body's injured in any way, healing occurs while you sleep. So if you have jacked up hormones, huge hormone imbalance, what's the likelihood your body's going to heal as the repeated injury of autoimmune disease happens on your body? It doesn't. That's why pain yeah. continues to get worse and worse. So there's a huge speaking connection with hormone balance and pain. Well, and speaking of sleep, I didn't sleep and just getting my blood sugar under control, Maggie, was amazing. I sleep through the night probably 70% of the time when I never did before. And if I don't, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I know why. And I have nuts at stand. And okay. if I wake up and fall right back into sleep, I just grab, you know, a little handful of nuts, eat the nuts, and I can fall back to sleep because I, I know what's causing yeah. I love this. All right. So here's the deal. Let's look at this diagram and I'm going to divide it into what is the old way. Okay. This is the new way. I mean, there's totally a new way of just, and it's a simple lie and it's a simple fix in that sense. If you don't believe that there is no cause for your symptoms, that there really is a cause, and you get yourself in this program and a system to educate yourself. So, I mean, did you know this three months ago? No. Okay. So she was able to take level five out of 10 pain to zero out of 10 pain. And it's consistent. You're like two months out of the program. So mm -hmm. this isn't just a miracle that happened the eight weeks you're in the program. It's actually you continue to have layers and layers of improvement because you're addressing yeah. these causes and you're getting more and more of these layers to be integrating together to understand. Yes. So I look at the old way as the $100,000 blah. 
okay, of 10 years. 10, 10, the roll of 10. $10,000 10 year, uh, 10, a year, 10 years, over $100,000 of all this pain, fatigue, brain fog, tons of treatments and band-aids. And the impact was it was lost in promotion, isolation socially, trigger avoidance, um, paranoid and hyper-focus and, and trigger avoidance, lack of mojo, joy in your life. Anxiety. Anxiety, right? Okay. Uh, so I love the fact that this is your great case to illustrate what is the old way, which is when you believe a lie, the cause there is no um, cause to effect, and then there's a new way of absolutely mastering what the cause is, and that's only in pain alone. We can make a triangle like this for the fatigue. We can make a triangle like this for the brain fog for you, and it would be different. Each triangle would be different, um, and that's what's the beauty of this is um, that you're able to actually see. <laughs> exactly what the cause and effect is and so if you think about it i mean this in, investing in yourself to actually understand how this process work can actually eliminate a decade of that financial loss but also all those symptoms of the pain fatigue and brain fog they're i mean where is your fatigue I'm, i didn't even ask where's your fatigue where's your brain fog at this point uh, my brain fog is probably if i do zero to ten my, my brain fog um on a good day is zero, on a bad day is maybe one or two. Um, you know, I can look at my students, I always greet my students in the morning and they, and I, you know, make them look at me and I say good morning and I say their name and then they have to say good morning back to me and look me in the eye, it's just polite. And, yeah. it, and it recognizes them. Last year, um, I had to explain to my students all about lupus and tell them that the reason I could up with their name as I looked them straight in the eye even halfway through the year was not them and it wasn't that I didn't value them and it wasn't that they weren't important it was that my brain was slow to pull up their name and they mm -hmm. I trained you know figured out that they would just stand there and look at me patiently and they were so sweet and it, eventually I would come around to their name this year I can tell I can rip off my kids names just you know right away and that is such a gift that's incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the thing, you know, like I know a lot of times we think in dollar amounts and stuff, but what is this result and outcome that you've experienced, the changes in your life right now? Like, can you put a dollar amount on that? What is this outcome worth to you? It, 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 you can't put a dollar amount on it because it is, they're priceless intangible things. I'm here with my family and in years past, I wasn't able to help do things. I wasn't able to help go do the shopping or cook the dinner or, but now I can do those things. I can feel like I'm pulling my weight and not a burden. Um, I, I can go outside with my kids and, and if, if I, I don't have to be afraid of the sun. Um, and I don't, my kids don't, my students this year don't know what lupus is. They have no idea. They have no idea. But in the past, I've had to let them know, hey, guys, it's not you, it's me. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Kim, thank you so much for braving this. And anybody in the alumni that's watching right now, please give, um, give Kim a huge thumbs up here and some hearts uh, for braving this. This is not easy to share her personal life and medical history with all of you. And your, her intention and my intention is that we went through this workshop to show you guys exactly how you can look at what is the cause and effect of this, how, you can, how there's an old way, and what is the impact, what are the symptoms, what is the impact, uh, what are the treatments as a result of that? What's the financial uh, impact of that? Uh, that's the old way. And then we can look at the new way and we say, what is the cause? What is the effect? Clearly laid out in a new strategy. And you can do this worksheet yourself. Um, if those of you want to learn more about our program, you can clearly go to um, auto, uh, uh, if the link is listed above, you can watch our free training about what our program is about. Um, and schedule a call with us so you can develop a personal game plan, which is what I just did with Kim. Uh, and it's not even a theor theoretical at this point. You've achieved this, Kim. <laughs> and you did it in eight weeks to actually get from zero knowledge about this and believing in the lie to you knew all these answers at the end of eight weeks. So that's a great launching pad for the next year, three years of your life. And it was wonderful because I there are tools now and there's information it was a teaching program it wasn't just here do this here do that here take this it was teaching me about my autoimmune disease and what the causes are and how do i address those things so it gave me power instead of the power still residing in the medical community i have power
Well, but here's the other thing. It's an illusion that they have power, actually. That's, I mean, we could do another video on why that's a lie. The medical community yeah. are so blind with the lack of cause and effect that they actually are very powerless to actually treat autoimmune disease. And if they're powerless, what does that make you? Right. Get out of luck. Yeah. As a teacher, <laughs> I valued the educational aspect. So, you know, I think this is, this is a huge thing, Kim. Is, is, I think it's a concept. Power for, in, in mastering autoimmune disease doesn't come externally. It actually comes from within. Mm. The more you invest in making yourself powerful, the more you actually have confidence around the outcomes of autoimmune disease. Yes. Yes. And, and I'm not at the mercy of it. I know what will cause my pain or my fatigue. And I am so excited. Two things I'm excited about. Tell me. One, when my graduation call with you to hear you say, it's only going to get better. You know, the eight weeks is not the end of it. It's only going to get better. It's a as I continue. Yes. And two, I am going to Europe this summer for three weeks. And that would never have even been enough to be a pipe dream before. Now I, I can do this. Thank you, Kim. Thank yes. you so much. What I'm going to do is, Kim and I are going to ask you guys this. If you're watching this, what I'm going to ask you is, is that, you know, the biggest issue with autoimmune disease is the lack of awareness. Um, people don't really, uh, it's actually one of the leading causes of pain, suffering, death, and disability in our country and the world, in fact. But yet there's a complete lack of awareness of it. And in the medical community and patients also, and regular people out there, there's just a lack of awareness about this. We just went through a whole diagram and training session on what the one lie with, um, if you could if you yourself or someone you know could benefit from learning this one lie and how cracking this lie wide open can actually bring you the results and outcomes in as little as eight weeks. Uh, share this video now because awareness is key. So go ahead and share this video with someone you know that you know is believing and living this lie. Um, and go ahead and comment with their name below. That'd be awesome. And if you want to learn more about the program, go ahead and click the link up there and watch the training. But most importantly, I want to raise awareness. And here's the deal. They may not listen to you, but they may listen to me and they may listen to Kim. Okay. So go ahead and share it right now. So thank you so much for this uh, Facebook live with us. We decided to run it as a workshop. I hope that was helpful in the feedback section. If you liked it as a uh, teaching workshop, uh, say below, I love teaching workshops uh, and you can say more. More case studies, more teaching workshops. Uh, I will do that if you guys like this and you comment below. So please do that right now. And thank you, Kim, so much for joining us. Sure, thank you. Bye-bye.